What's up, Cal gang? All right, so we got this, uh, this you know, fluid dynamics problem basically going on. So you got this bucket, uh, it gives you a lot of information. Some of it is useful, some of it is not useful. And basically, so there's water flowing out, it gives you this cross-sectional area, and it has water flowing in at this rate, a very small rate. And it basically wants to know, at like, which height is it just gonna, f like, you know, what, at what height, basically, what is it asking exactly? Uh, you know, it, like, it, gee, it's just like, what height, basically, is it gonna f stay still? Um, so you can think about it like, if it's shallow, there's not gonna be a lot of pressure pushing it out. But if it's really high, there's gonna be a lot of pressure pushing it out of this valve. So there's gonna be some level basically in between where it doesn't going up or isn't going down, it's just kind of staying still. What is that height, right? How are we gonna do this? So we got uh, a couple things we can say. So we're trying to find when uh, dv over dt in is equal to dv over dt out. This is basically the volume, the rate at which the volume comes in, and this is the rate at which the volume leaves. So we know that dv over dt is equal to um, the cross-sectional area times the velocity at which it leaves. We know that, right? So these are some things we can basically try to figure out. And basically what we're gonna need is to use these in acquaintance uh, with velocity, right? So we're trying to find height and we're looking at this equation. We're like, there's no height in that. How are we gonna get height into the equation? We need height somewhere. And if you think about all your fluid knowledge, where includes height? That's right, Bernoulli's equation, right? Bernoulli's equation, so pressure one plus density gravity height plus density velocity squared, I guess we can label these one, is equal to pressure two plus density gravity height of two plus density velocity two. So we're not gonna use all this, right? So I'm pretty sure there's nothing it says about the pressure, right? We don't worry about the pressure uh, because we can just assume that there's gonna be atmospheric pressure up here and there's gonna be atmospheric pressure down here, right? So the pressures are gonna basically, they're not gonna cancel out. They're gonna be the exact same, which you can basically just say that they're not gonna be a valuable part of this uh, equation that we're using. So pressure or density gravity height one, right? This is something we like. Um, that's that's basically basically like thinking about like where what is the what is it like right here? Let's look at the conditions right here, right? This is basically what we're looking at. So that's its height, but then its velocity, right? Uh, it's still water, right? So when it leaves, it has velocity, but when we're considering just still water, it's applying pressure, like it's applying pressure through the height, but not through velocity. There's no velocity at that point, so we can cancel that part out. And then here, we're taking this to be height zero, and then this is the height above height zero. So this height's not gonna matter, but it has velocity. So this simple equation is gonna kind of become density gravity height one is equal to density times velocity two squared. So the densities can cancel out and you're just gonna get gravity height is equal to velocity squared. You're gonna basically are trying to find velocity, right? So we can plug it into this equation. So you're gonna get velocity is equal to the square root of gravity times the height. So great, uh, we got this going now. Um, let's let's play it in, right? Like we're there, right? So let's go back. Wow. Did you see that? I don't know. I hope that was on camera. I just flipped it and caught it. So let's go back here. So dv dt, we're trying to find when this is equal to that. So let's plug in the number. So 2.05 times 10 to the negative 4 is equal to the cross sectional area. Unfortunately, it's in centimeters squared, so we're going to have to or convert that over. So if we're thinking, we're trying to, you know, we have 1.92 centimeters squared, and we're trying to get that in meters squared. Uh, we're trying to get it in meters squared. Don't mean to do it like that. We're gonna multiply. Uh, so you know that one meter is 100 centimeters. So you're gonna have to cube the bottom and then cube the top. So it's gonna be basically 1.92 divided by 100 squared, and you're gonna get a number for that. <laughs> I don't remember what the number is. It's gonna be something to the bottom negative, so it's gonna be 1.92 times 10 to the negative four meters squared. So that's how many, that's basically the unit we're trying to find that we have. So then we plug that in here, so it's gonna be 1.92 times 10 to the negative four, and then velocity, which we found there, is square root gravity height. So from here, all you have to do is, you know, move things around, right? So you're gonna divide this by that, and you're gonna get 
1.07 if you want the square root of gravity height. Hold on guys, I'm gonna to try to salvage this, I made a mistake. Okay, so when I put Bernoulli's equation, I don't know why, it's been a minute I guess, but there's one halves here. Uh, yep, so this is one half, this is one half. You're gonna to need to multiply this by two, so there's gonna be a two here. Uh, luckily this isn't that big a deal, but I literally don't have time to start over, so there's gonna be a two here now. And then you're gonna basically square that, you're gonna get 1.14 is equal to two gravity height. And they're going to get height is equal to 0 0.058 meters, which is equal to 5.8 centimeters. Here's the answer. I don't have time. I have to go now. There's probably someone waiting for me. So I'll see you guys later. Thanks for the support. See you guys next time.